Tonight, I am immensely proud to announce the 2022 Armenian National Committee of Australia Freedom Award honoree. Our dear friend, founder of the Centre of Law and Justice, the Tatoyan Foundation, and former human rights defender of the Republic of Armenia, Dr. Arman Tatoyan. So many dedicated people and professional Armenians to address my speech on a number of vital issues related to the rights of all of us and our sacred motherland. It is of utmost importance to address to you today at this monumental event, the Armenian National Committee of Australia Annual Gala 2022. Immediately before my visit to Australia, I went to Sunik. Gelar Kunik and Vyodzor provinces of Armenia to be able to provide to you and to Australian authorities up-to-date information, collect facts and evidence. My team and I of the Center for Law and Justice at Oyan Foundation went to frontline villages, towns, roads connecting our communities. And I have to say that the situation is created humanitarian crisis. Azerbaijani military positions appeared in the immediate vicinity of our villages on the roads. First, they installed immediately after the war, they installed signs in the vicinity of our villages, welcome to Azerbaijan, illegally, unlawfully. Then, using the reason, fabricated reasons, they installed and located military servicemen, which control and still continue to control civilian life of our bordering communities, causing suffering to our civilian communities. They isolate villages, keep villages in blockades, kidnapping civilians, stealing their cattle. I remember a case when a civilian from the community of Sunik province was literally kidnapped when he, went, he, when he took his cattle to the pasture which was inside the territory of Armenia. By the elections, Azerbaijani armed forces created socio-economic serious problems for our citizens. They cannot use their pastures, arable lands, grasslands. Our foundation revealed that all of these lands belong to our citizens by cadastral documentation and other legal certificates. Presence of Azerbaijani military caused huge security issues, not only for civilians, adults, but also children, elderly. In Shurno village, which is in Goris community, Sunik province, the village is literally divided into two parts, so-called Azerbaijani part and Armenian. I saw there a, a house and two girls, eight and ten years old maximum, playing in their garden, but with closed fences, because their parents have, nature, have fe feelings of fear, which is natural. Right across the street, there are Azerbaijani armed forces located. Because of Azerbaijani armed forces, there are Russian border guards and Armenian border guards. During my meetings with international people, I was asking a question. Who could imagine rights of children secured when, when there are armed forces of three countries where children, girls, boys play, go to school. When they watch them from the window, they see Azerbaijani soldiers, snipers, watching them, turned with their guns, firearms, to their windows, to the windows of their schools. Azerbaijani immediately after the war, Azerbaijani incursions 
created huge problem for the army, for, for the Republic of Armenia. The first incursion occurred in May 2021. Then there were incursions, incursions in November 2021, in March 2022, and in September 2022. There was another incursion which, detect, which was detected by our team. It occurred during the war in 2020, in October, again in Sunik village. <coughs> Azerbaijani authorities continue illegally, unlawfully keeping Armenian prisoners of war and civilian captives. By so-called investigations, they continue to continue taking or attempting to take military and political benefits as an exchange as an exchange award to hand over to Armenia prisoners of war every time. Five people, ten persons. There is apparent impunity. Azerbaijani soldiers when torturing Armenians, female soldiers, nurses, male soldiers, they act brutally in a cynical way, with open faces, they take whatever they do, being confident that there will be no punishment for them. The same is about the authorities, high level authorities of Azerbaijan. Acting without sanctions, without proper, proper assessment, they only increase the level of their hatred, amenophobia, and consequently on the ground, the level of torture. Azerbaijani authorities recently are targeting very highly diaspora of Armenia, trying to create problems between Armenia, Artsakh, and diaspora. Literally saying that Armenia, Armenians of Armenia and Artsakh are poisoned by diaspora. This poison mainly comes from their diaspora, which sits in a very quiet and nice places, enjoying their life, and they want those Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh and in Armenia to be their hostages and their tools for them to pursue some ambitions and chauvinistic ideas. Well, this rhetoric is the manifestation of an ingrained hatred of Armenians that find expression also in the media and the education system, kindergartens, schools, and it is so deeply rooted. Consistent with this policy, it is very clear that the hatred policy is based on two main grounds. This is the ethnic belonging and the religious belonging. Azerbaijani propag propagation of hate against Armenians has manifested itself in the condoning, rewarding, and even glorifying of crimes against Armenians. The deplorable history of persecutions of Armenians in the region dates back centuries. The contemporary policies of discrimination against ethnic Armenians, which are an inalienable part of the life, within the Republic of Azerbaijan are rooted in developments in the early 20th century and are linked directly with the genocidal policies of the Ottoman Empire. Our compatriots living in Armenia and Artsakh experience the same threats and difficulties as our grandparents and parents went through the, in the Ottoman Empire. We have to learn lessons, recognize threats and act accordingly. How we can overcome all these difficulties and challenges, and whether it is possible, and whether we are able to do that. For this sacred mission, we have to act in unity and solidarity, more than ever. Over our strategy should be our joint efforts to ensure the long-standing peace and security of our motherland and our nation. We, ourselves, are the guarantors of our rights and safe future. And now I would like to turn to thank the Armenian National Committee of Australia, the entire team, for their tremendous efforts and tireless efforts in protection of the rights of Armenian people. This was my first ever experience in the direct cooperation, being present in Australia. Before this meeting, we, we have been cooperating a lot. During the war, immediately after the war, and this assistance was tremendous that we were receiving from the Armenian National Committee of Australia. 
which was about documentation, assisting us in documenting, analyzing, verifying evidence, sending them to international organizations, facilitating meetings with international partners. The history of our nation, of course, is difficult. Our, our compatriots had to live last century, 20th century, their houses, their motherland. And some of them came to Australia, to this country. And I have to say that today I feel the strength and the magic that our grandparents and parents found after the Armenian Genocide. Because it is about the ideas, values of advocating for your people and for your motherland, which gave us wings in the beginning of the 20th century. Still fly high. The force which gave us strength years ago, it continues to empower us and including me. So, my congratulations and happy annual gala event to you all. Dear Armenian National Committee of Australia and dear compatriots, Varsker Nid Qatar, as you say in diaspora. I don't know all there is to know about ANC of Australia and ANCA, ANCA is in other parts of the world, but I do know that we fight for ideas and we do, we fight for the same goals and the same mission. Being here in Australia, I could feel myself on my shoulders and my soul, how dedicated my compatriots are here and I'm very proud of them. I express my deep gratitude for the Freedom Award that I received. Thank you all for being with us all along the way. We have many seeds to plant along the path. We won't reach our destination in one day, but I know we can get there. We shall never give up, never retreat. We have no choice but to accomplish our historical mission, to use our wisdom to progress and prosper. Thank you very much. And as a, as a symbol of of dedicated activities, of the of dedication of Armenian National Committee of Australia, the strong ties between Armenia and our community here, I want to present a gift or to hand over a very important thing. It is it is Fresco Saint Nicholas the Wonder Worker receiving back Episcopal insignia that is on the wall of Dadivank. And with this, I want to express my confidence that we will go back, as we say. And this church, which is true Armenian church and belongs to our history, is a part of our nature, still we will have the possibility to visit it. And I want as a symbol, as a, um, even a safeguard for this very important mission to live it here with you, my dear compatriots, members of Armenian National Committee of Australia, Armenian community, so that to have the possibility to go together to Dadivank and I would ask you to bring it with you when we go there so that we can verify uh, that this is the exact <laughs> gift from there. Yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. 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 Yes.